wrote a seven play cycle called the Wakefield plays and I gave it was first a trilogy of three three act plays and I gave them to Thornton Wilder who was my friend and mentor and to read and he read them and was full of praise but he, he said one thing that just changed the course of my writing he said of course there isn't very much Wakefield in those plays mm -hmm. and what he meant as the guy who created Grover's Corner is that they really didn't have the 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 dialect and the smell of of small town anyway after Wilder said what he said I wrote a little uh, one act play called Hopscotch that was set in my hometown that was a very personal play and I used the dialect and the accent of and I just it was like uh, you know discovering dried mango or something I just loved it and and so then I did another and another and another finally I bought the little house in Gloucester and I got caught up in the town and the, it was just at this odd time as I said my dad was a a truck driver it was this odd time when working class life in America sort of disappeared. The fishing industry dried up. So I started to write more and more plays about the town and it also Wilder said to me, and it was very impressive, he said, you don't have to write about the world. If you can write about one little place and you get it right, it'll work for the world. Terrence McNally, Leonard Melfi, and I years ago wrote a Broadway triptych. We were best friends, and we, we wrote three one interrelated one-act plays, Morning, Noon, and Night. And the morning play at Spoleto that went to Paris with De Padu was my morning play for Morning, Noon, and Night. Leonard uh, had a very tough time eventually leading to his death. He, was, he had a big alcohol problem. Leonard died. Terrence had a terrible lung cancer. We spent a day together, and I said, "Let's let. Why don't we do a duet? We're down to a duet now, because when we work together, it gives us a good reason to be seeing each other." So we decided to do uh, an evening called Off Season, and because he's incredibly involved in the in the Key West community, he's got a house there, and he spends a lot of time. And I'm deeply involved in the Gloucester. Even though we both live in New York in the West Village, we spend our away from, we spend a lot, and I used to spend a lot of time in Gloucester. Anyway, he wrote a play, I forget the name of it, set in a um, gay uh, bed and breakfast in Key West in the middle of the summer, when it's just dead. Mm -hmm. And I wrote the, what is ostensibly the first act of Sins of the Mother, set in, on the docks in Gloucester, Massachusetts, in the dead of winter. And we did the two plays, first in Key West, and they loved Terrence's play, and they hated my play. And then we did the plays in Gloucester, and they loved my play, and I've never seen worse reviews than Terrence got for his play. It was awful. And so we decided that divorce was probably a very good idea. And I forgot about, I forgot about uh, this one act play and somebody mentioned it to me and I went oh yeah I really and I pulled it out we did a reading of it at the actors studio in the playwrights unit and it was Horton Foote, Ulu Grossbar, Jules Pfeiffer it was this really distinguished panel they did a reading of the we did a reading of the play very good actors and everybody said Israel you've, you, you've got to fit this is a full length play you've got to finish the play you've got to, you've got to finish you've got to really write this play, blah, blah, blah. So I said, oh, that's a great idea. I went home five years later. <laughs> I had no idea until I, until I came up with the idea of the, the twin brother going back. I don't want to reveal what the, what the play is about, but going back um, and had this idea of, of the same actor playing identical twins, you know, with, with a real purpose. And then it kind of wrote itself.